In the 21st century, over a thousand operating satellites orbit our planet Earth. We use them daily for weather prediction, television, navigation, and even space-based internet. But today's most important satellite came only at the end of the 20th century. It is destined to enable us to help us to prepare to take the next giant leap past our moon and into the solar system. This satellite is NASA's International Space Station. In an orbit about 250 miles above Earth, the station travels at a speed of 17,500 miles per hour, circling the globe every 90 minutes. The International Space Station was built with the cooperation of 15 countries under the leadership of the United States. For its construction, 40 NASA space shuttle flights carried components in space between 1998 and 2011. For more than a decade, space shuttle carried multiple modules like solar arrays, support structures, and other vital components. The International Space Station was assembled in orbit, piece by piece. The European Space Agency contributed the Columbus Laboratory, which is connected to a mission control center in Germany. This laboratory has enabled the station crew and Earth researchers to conduct thousands of experiments in weightlessness for sciences, physics, and other disciplines. How do you get electricity 250 miles above Earth? You need to use the best source of energy a spacecraft can get, sunlight. The International Space Station's solar arrays are made with thousands of solar cells that can convert light to electrical power efficiently. These cells are using a process called photovoltaics. Sometimes astronauts need to venture outside the International Space Station to work on the maintenance of the station. In 2015, U.S. astronauts Scott Kelly and Jell Lindgren left the station for a six-and-a-half-hour walk to work on upgrading the ISS. In preparing for their walk, the astronauts have been assisted by veteran Russian cosmonauts from the other side of the space station who help them understand how the immune system is affected by stress in space. Completed in 2011, the station is the size of a football field and can be seen among the moon, planets, and stars as it zooms over your house. To date, the station has hosted crew members from 17 countries doing research in over 50 disciplines. The completion of the International Space Station was one of the crowning achievements for NASA's Space Shuttle program. How do you get electricity 250 miles above Earth? You need to use the best source of energy a spacecraft can get.
The first Stonehenge was a large earthwork consisting of a ditch, bank, and the Aubrey holes, all probably built about 3100 BC. The Aubrey holes are round pits in the chalk about one meter wide and deep with steep sides and flat bottoms. They form a circle about 284 feet in diameter. Excavations have revealed cremated human bones in some of the chalk filling, but the holes themselves were probably made not for the purpose of graves, but as part of the religious ceremony. The second stage of Stonehenge started around 2150 BC. Some 82 bluestones from the Priscelli Mountains in southwest Wales were transported to the site. This astonishing journey covers nearly 240 miles. Once at the site, these stones were set up in the center to form a double circle. The third stage of Stonehenge, about 2000 BC, saw the arrival of the Sarsen Stones, which were almost certainly brought from the Marlborough Downs, about 25 miles north of Stonehenge. The largest of the Sarsen Stones transported to Stonehenge weigh 50 tons, and transportation by water would have been impossible. The stones could only have been moved using sledges and ropes. Modern calculations show it would have taken 500 men using leather ropes to pull one stone with an extra 100 men needed to lay the huge rollers in front of the sledge. These stones were arranged in an outer circle with a continuous run of lintels. Inside the circle, five trilithons were placed in a horseshoe arrangement, whose remains we can still see today. The final stage took place soon after 1500 BC, when the blue stones were rearranged inside the circle that we see today. The original number of stones in the Blue Stone Circle was probably around 60. Nowadays, a million people visit Stonehenge every year. They ask the same old questions about the monument. How was Stonehenge built 4,000 years ago? While we may have some clues, this secret might stay buried forever. This sarsen stone is part of one of the five trilithons of Stonehenge. A trilithon is a structure consisting of two large vertical stones supporting a third stone set horizontally across the top. Stonehenge's sarsen stone can be as high as 13.7 meters, 45 feet, and weight up to 50 tons each. This stone is one of the 60 blue stones that were brought from Wales to build Stonehenge. The stones are estimated to weigh between two and four tons each. This sarsen stone is part of one of the five trilithons of Stonehenge. A trilithon is a structure consisting of two large vertical stones supporting a third stone set horizontally across the top. Stonehenge's sarsen stone can be as high as 13.7 meters, 45 feet, and weight up to 50 tons each. Thirty enormous sarsen stones like this one were brought to the site and organized in a circle to create this monument. Each standing stone is around 13 feet high and weight around 25 tons.
The heart is the pump of the human circulatory system. It pumps blood through the circulatory system and provides the body with oxygen and nutrients. Oxygenated blood from the lungs travels through large vessels called the pulmonary veins. It enters the left side of the heart, emptying directly into the left atrium. The heart contraction forces the blood to exit into an opening that leads directly to the largest artery in the body, the aorta. Many arteries branch from the aorta to carry oxygen-rich blood to all parts of the body. The pathway to the body regions and organs other than the lungs is called the systemic circulation. The systemic circulation brings blood to the neck and head and to organs in the rest of the body. It gives up oxygen to the body tissues and receives carbon dioxide. The blood that flows into the arterial system then returns to the heart entering the right side. Two large veins collect blood from the systemic circulation. The superior vena cava drains the upper body and the inferior vena cava drains the lower body. These veins dump deoxygenated blood into the right side of the heart. The blood then passes into a single pulmonary artery called the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk branches in two arteries that carry deoxygenated blood to the lungs. While the blood passes through the lungs, it receives oxygen and gives off carbon dioxide. The blood then returns to the left side of the heart, replenished with oxygen and cleared up of carbon dioxide, ready to be carried to all parts of the body.
Thank you.